So uh, as the chairman said, uh, the presentation will be completely different from uh, what we've seen um, for, uh, for now. And it goes back to the uh, main purpose of the advanced driver assistance system. It's to save lives and to avoid the different uh, road accidents. So uh, obviously, uh, I'll take some, exp some ex example to explain it. When you're driving too fast just before a bend, uh, uh, the ADAS should detect that you're going too fast and adapt the speed of the vehicle. That's uh, some kind of active system. But to adapt correctly the speed of the, uh, of the vehicle, he has to get a good reference, a safe reference. And that's why here I present uh, a part of my PhD work, which is the, uh, the constraint trajectory generation. Constraint because uh, you know that the driving task is a constrained task. So the, outlook, the uh, content of my presentation is uh, quite academic. It will present the context of my work. Then I will present uh, our, uh, uh, the, system, the solution we've developed, then testing results, and finally I will conclude. So the context of our work is uh, navigation-aided uh, driver assistance systems. So this means that the main sensor of our system is the navigation. So here you may find the different element. Uh, the thing it, which is important is the electronic horizon provider because uh, this uh, tool will help us to extract the important or relevant information from the digital map databases. And this information will be used by several, uh, I'll say, uh, tools that we've developed to help controllers and to apply uh, correctly uh, uh, the different uh, controls, safe controls on the vehicle. So today we'll focus on the trajectory generation and on the constraint definition, so on constraint trajectory generation. So our system is based on two main things. The first thing is a, a mathematical model, which is a, a spline, a parametric cubic spline. So we've chosen this solution because they provide a, a curvature continuity with flow order polynomials and thus they are adapted to all road contexts, so bands, straight lines, and so on. And we use this model as a basis of an optimization algorithm, which will allow us to integrate the different constraints to minimize a cost criterion, which here will be this trajectory energy, and which may fulfill the real-time constraints, because uh, you have some, uh, I'll say, advanced uh, optimization techniques uh, also, uh, non-linear optimization, but this system may not be directly, directly be applicable in real time. So, uh, as you know, digital map database uh, are only giving in fact, classical digital map database are only giving information about the center of the road. So, the first thing to do is to generate or to calculate a road model, and then we'll apply our system which is uh, the trajectory validity area determination and the context optimization. So what about the constraints we've considered in our, in, uh, our solution? Uh, so let's talk about uh, the main problem, which is the, the car driving on its lane. You know for sure that you have some geometrical constraints. For, you know, for uh, lateral controllers and uh, other controllers, uh, curvature continuity is an advantage because uh, yeah, for trajectory tracking, it may be very helpful. And for safety reason, you also know that your vehicle have to stay direct in the driving lane. So this means that uh, you are not able to go uh, very far from the center of the lane, because if you're going too close to the center of the road here, you may perhaps hit the vehicle which is going in front of you. So here we've defined an area, which is in blue, on which uh, the trajectory must lie. So then the last uh, geometrical constraint we've considered here is the minimum turn, uh, minimum turn radius of the vehicle. We have also considered some kinematic constraints. You know that you cannot uh, have a maximum steering speed. Uh, you have a maximum uh, limitation on the steering speed in the vehicle. And you have also dynamic constraints. We have tried to integrate some comfort, driver comfort in the system. So we generate trajectory uh, so that this comfort uh, is relatively uh, granted. So that's the context of the work. Let's not get directly inside the details of the proposed solution. 
So just I have a little uh, overview of the parametric cubic spline. It's very general, I think you know it. It's piecewise polynomial interpolation. This means that you have a polynomial uh, between uh, each pair of points here. And you have two polynomials because we are in a two-dimensional system. And it's some kind of constraint interpolation because you have some continuity constraints at interpolated points, mainly uh, first and second derivative continuities, which helps to get the curvature continuity. And you have also two tuning parameters, which are boundary conditions and parameter values, but we're not uh, going uh, deep inside these uh, points. So, no. How to use this model to generate constraint trajectory generation? So we go from the expression of spline, and then we define that the optimization system has to find of the most relevant spline. So what we are looking for, yeah, it is the coefficient of the spline here, AFS, BFS, and so on, which respects some constraints, so equality constraints, inequality constraints, and which minimize a cost criterion, which will be here, the trajectory energy. So one remark about this is that the geometric constraint I've presented before, I directly integrated and explicitly integrated in the inequality and equality constraints. However, all the other constraints which are related to the trajectory curvature are implicitly integrated in the, energy, uh, the cost return to be minimized. So uh, here, to check if the solution is valid, we propose a post-checking of these constraints. So based on this expression, we have three main uh, points to be determined, which are equality, inequalities, and cost return. So let's start with the equality. As mentioned before, the equality uh, refers to the curvature continuity of the curve. And uh, here I uh, re, uh, reprinted the different continuities from the spline, which are then expressed in the coefficient, like here. And as an example, you have this kind of results. You have a trajectory which is continuous in curvature, but it, which is not very satisfactory because uh, you see there is a, a lot of oscillations here. So uh, let's go over the inequalities. So. This refers to the fact that the trajectory must remain in the validity area, so provide safety uh, for uh, current for for uh, ADAS which are using this information. So uh, the, valid the validity area is defined by two two uh, bounds, which is E and G, and obviously this defines that the, the uh, constraint trajectory has to be bounded between these two limitations. So this refers to the definition of the positivity of polynomials. And here I have some uh, reference if you want to uh, get some more information about this. Um, this, uh, the solution, this paper, however, gives uh, that the positivity of polynomials in a defined interval is given by two subsets, which are, uh, we, which are A and B. And A is linear and B nonlinear. Uh, due to the uh, consider optimization, we cannot uh, integrate directly nonlinear non uh, positivity conditions. So we are focused only on the subset A, which is which defines the positivity of a polynomial like f uh, uh, regarding to the coefficient like this. So back into our problem, which is the spline coefficient. This is expressed like this, like this, and the result is a, a trajectory which is which has curvature continuity and which is constrained in the validity area. However, you can see that it is still oscillating in the validity area, so we have to do something to uh, get some smoother trajectory. So that's why now we integrate some minimization cost of, for, for cost criterion and. Uh, the cost considered cost oh, sorry the considered cost criterion in the trajectory energy which is defined as the integral of the square curvature along the trajectory so you can see that uh, the para parametric expression for the curvature is uh, a little bit non linear and, and a little bit complex so we had to move on a suboptimal solution which has been obtained using uh, two by doing some two assumptions so the first assumption is that we consider an independent minimization of each parametric curve curvature. So here you can see that the curvature mix 
the uh, curvature, uh, the uh, expression coming from the x and y, and here we consider it separately. And the second assumption is to consider that x dot two uh, square and y dot square are small to one, so we get a simpler expression, a suboptimal expression. Then go get back into our problem. This expression has been integrated because it is defined regarding the spline coefficient. And uh, we can guess that the result here uh, gives a trajectory which, is curvature con which has curvature continuity, which is constricted in the validity area, and which presents a smooth shape. So now that we've defined and detail our solution, let's move on the testing results. As mentioned before, the uh, primary, element, primary information we have is the road. Then uh, here it's left bend, which is going from mountain road. The start is here. So the next step is the definition of the validity area, which is here in green. And for comparison purpose, we've used this uh, validity area to generate two trajectories. One which is only considering the equality and equality constraints. <laughs> So, which is in red, and the other one which minimizes the trajectory uh, uh, energy. So, two remarks, two main remarks about this is that both trajectories are, are constrained in the validity area. And uh, you can see, I think the screen size is uh, large enough that uh, in a, the trajectory which minimizes the energy is using the lateral space available in the validity area more efficiently. Uh, the, we, having this shape, we can guess that the impact on the energy on, and on the curvature will be uh, somehow important. So I've planned some zoom, but I think it was it's useless due to the screen size. So here you have the plot of the curvature. You see that uh, in red, you have a lot of oscillations. And in blue, which correspond to the trajectory which minimize the energy, you have some kind of smoother curvature. I admit it's not perfect, but you, can, you have a large reduction uh, of the oscillation here and here. So as I mentioned it before, as the sum of our considered constraints are uh, uh, implicitly integrated in the minimization of the cost return, we have to do some post-checking. So that's what we've done here. Just here you have the instantaneous acceleration, which is obtained using a model with, uh, an acceleration model using a curvature as an entry. So you see that in some specific parts, but only on specific parts, uh, the acceleration constraint here is not uh, granted. However, you can see that the curvature maximum uh, constraint and the curvature derivative maximum constraint are now granted because of the energy minimization. So one solution to grant the last constraint may be to reduce the speed, because we, to, to, uh, to uh, get the, the previous figure, we've used the legal speed limit, which was of 30 kilometers per hour. And uh, it's obvious that you will not always be uh, at a constant speed and at the constant limit speed. So you may be able to get the last constraints by just reducing your speed by seven kilometers per hour. Okay, so that's finished for the results. Let's make some conclusions and for future works. So what we've presented here is a constraint trajectory uh, generation, which is based on the uh, parametric cubic spline and on a convex optimization and which integrates constraints which are linked to the road, to the driver, and to the vehicle. And the main advantages of the proposed solution is that it provides smooth, uh, curvature continuous trajectories, and that it grants uh, the considered constraints. And finally, I've made some other tests on uh, the one presented here. Uh, I think about uh, 50, 50 or 60 different roads uh, which have uh, been composed of different elements, so in-city roads, mountain roads, uh, straight lines, uh, highways, and so on. And uh, I had a main gain, a uh, mean gain, sorry, of 3.5 percent of energy compared to the constraint trajectory, which is not minimizing the energy. However, we still have some limitations. 
the first one refers uh, to something I already said. It was the uh, implicit integration of some constraints. Uh, it does not consider the complete set of solutions. Uh, this refers to the inequalities, and it's only a suboptimal, or not only, but it's still a suboptimal solution, which means that we uh, may be able to find uh, a better solution. So for the future works, uh, there are many related to the limitation. And just to say, uh, study of the different cost criteria and application to or on control oriented ADAS are currently uh, in process. So I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'm now ready for questions.